हेलो एंड वेलकम एवरीवन टू द डेली न्यूज एनालिसिस ऑफ 26th ऑफ सितंबर 2023 तो आज के इतने सारे हिंदू न्यूज पेपर से इंपॉर्टेंट आर्टिकल से पहले वर्निंग हम देख लेते हैं पहला जो है तिब्बतन आर सीकिंग मोर ऑटोनोमी नॉट सेपरेशन फ्रॉम चाइना सेज दलाई लामा ये पेज नंबर 1 का है देन नेक्स्ट एक सेकंड ट्वेंटी डिप्लोमेसी एंड शिफ्टिंग वर्ल्ड ऑर्डर देन वार इन कोसस वार इन कोकसस द कावेरी वाटर कनंड्रम फर्टर द फाइंडिंग्स ऑफ द पार्लियामेंट पैनल ऑन एनईपी व्हाई द नॉर्थ ईस्ट कैन नॉट बी ट्रीटेड एज ए सिंगल होमोजेनियस टेरिटरी देन जयशंकर गुटेरस डिस्कस रिफॉर्म्स ऑफ द ग्लोबल फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशंस सस्टेनेबिलिटी देन फिलीपींस रिमूव चाइना बेरियर इन डिस्प्यूटेड सोल फॉलोइंग इंडिया यूएस रेजेस कंसर्न ओवर चाइनीज वेसल्स विजिट विथ श्रीलंका गवर्नमेंट बैंक्स बैंक्स टू अट्रैक्ट मोर ग्लोबल इन्वेस्टमेंट सेज एस एंड पी ग्लोबल देन बैंक्स टोल्ड टू डिस्प्ले इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑन द बोर लिंक्ड टू सरफाइस एक्ट चलिए देख लेते हैं सारे आर्टिकल्स तिब्बतन आर सीकिंग और ऑटोनोमी नॉट सेपरेशन फ्रॉम चाइना सेज दलाई लामा तिब्बतन आर आस्किंग फॉर मोर ऑटोनोमी बट नॉट पॉलिटिकल सेपरेशन एज एसेट्स द दलाई लामा एडिंग दैट फाइल ही विशेष टू रिविजिट लासा ही विल प्रेफर टू लिव ऑन इन धर्मशाला स्पीकिंग टू जर्नलिस्ट एट हिज होम इन धर्मशाला ऑन मंडे हेड ऑफ व्हाट इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू बी ए ग्रोएलिंग सीरीज ऑफ ट्रिप्स अराउंड इंडिया इंक्लूडिंग विजिट्स टू सिक्किम कर्नाटका एंड बोधगया इन बिहार दिस ईयर द दलाई लामा रिपीटेड रिपीटेड सम ऑफ द सीमिंगली कंसिलियेटरी रिमार्क्स ही हैज मेड इन द पास्ट चाइना हैज हाउ एवर रिजेक्टेड दिस रिमार्क्स एक्यूजिंग द दलाई लामा हु हैज लिव्ड इन एजेरी इन इंडिया सिंस 1959 ऑफ बीइंग ए स्प्लिटिस्ट और सेपरेटिस्ट वी वांट टू हैव फुल ऑटोनॉमी एज ए पार्ट ऑफ द पीपल्स रिपब्लिक ऑफ चाइना देन वी कैन हेल्प मिलियंस ऑफ चाइना विदाउट पॉलिटिकल सेपरेशन एंड रिमेनिंग ए पार्ट ऑफ पीपल्स रिपब्लिक द दलाई लामा सेड व्हाइल स्पीकिंग टू द स्मॉल ग्रुप ऑफ अ जर्नलिस्ट इंक्लूडिंग फ्रॉम द हिंदू फ्रॉम डेली ही एडेड जोकिंगली दैट ही कुड देन ही कुड देन ब्रेन वॉज द चाइनीज एज वेल इन ए लाइट हार्टेड response to china's allegation that the tibetan buddhist diaspora spreads propaganda about atrocities in tibet by the chinese government in july the dalai lama had surprised many by announcing that he had been contracted officially or unofficially by the chinese government in order to deal with the tibetan problems they want to contact contact me i am also ready for talk he added while the chinese government did not confirm any talks at present beijing has maintained at various points including in 2021 that any talks it holds are for the future of the dalai lama not the future of tibet indicating that dalai lama may be allowed to return lhasa for a visit when asked with the hindu asked by his by the hindu if he would like to return lhasa and to his summer home at Norbulinka in the city the Tibetan leader were was clear that he hoped to live in India although he would like to revisit Tibet especially as he preserves a change in China China is also now changing i think many people in Tibet love me similarly many chinese love me and so they want me to go back to Tibet but i do not want to stay here Lhasa is very high Dharmashala's height is very suitable for my physical condition now he said in response indicating the high altitude issues that many visitors face on Tibetan plateau i was born in Tibet but my spiritual knowledge is from here from Nalanda in India he said in a reference to the seat of a Buddhist teaching in India adding that so half my body is from here and at least The 88 year old spiritual leader had been meeting the public daily in the post covid period waving the crowd waving to crowds from his golf cart and seated as dozens of buddhist devotees and visitors from abroad 
file passed according to members of Central Tibetan Administration CTA, the body that oversees the Tibetan population in exile. The Dalai Lama is expected to hold Delhi teachings from October 2 in Dharmasala and leave for Gangtok on October 9. Holding discourse not far from the border with China and the Doklam Plateau, where India and Indian and Chinese soldiers face off, off in 2017. Earlier this year, he spent a month in Ladakh, and as he does not does most years, he is also stated slated to travel the Balakopi in Karnataka, which has houses the second largest Tibetan refugee settlement after Dharmasala, where he is expected to be joined by former U.S. President Barack Obama. The G20 Presidency and a Shifting World Order India scripted emerging success at the G20 meeting in Delhi on September 9-10 and despite the odds of subsidy, Succeeded in producing a consensus declaration worthy of an event of the of this magnitude, securing an agreement on almost a hundred issues on the agenda. Apart from that, the that on the Russia-Ukraine war was no mean achievement. All told, all told, the G20 outcomes seemed to mirror the hopes and the wishes of the wider global community. India, as the host, could rightfully take a large large measure measure of credit for this result. The New Delhi Declaration does indeed seem to have something for everyone for, from condemnation, condemnation of terrorism to climate issues from traveling of renewable energy capacity to matters such as a lifestyle for sustainable development and a reform of multilateral development banks apart from highlighting, highlighting India's contributions such as digital public infrastructure and a unified payment system interface and the declaration seemed to echo the prevailing mood of the mood in the G20 of favoring compromise over a conflict and fully fully endorsing Prime Minister Narendra Modi's dictum of the one year, one family, one future consensus on the Ukraine conflict became possible with the West agreeing to climb down from its demand not to point fingers at East Russia of Russia for Ukraine conflict and giving up on the insistence to proclaim Russia as guilty. The New Delhi Declaration thus sharply differs from the Bali Declaration of November 2020, where by a majority vote, the Russian Federation was condemned for its aggressions with Ukraine. The difference between two declarations is that while Bali was a accusatory to in tune, New Delhi sought a resolution to the conflict Russia and China have since held the New Delhi Declaration in sharp contrast to their criticism of Bali Declaration for India, which is a founder member of the G20 formed in 1999 as a grouping of a finance minister and central bank governor. It was upgraded to summit level in 2008 and which hosted the G20 meeting in 2002 of a finance ministry and a central bank governor. The world has come full circle today. India is amongst the leaders of whose word counts. A better outcome could not have been wished for. China's perception is for concern. Euphoria about G20 outcome under India's presidency, however, needs to be contempted given the many dark clouds that exist on the horizon. China might have welcomed the Delhi Declaration, but there is inherent forbidding in its affirmation that the G20 was intended to be a forum for economic cooperation and not platform for resolving geopolitical and security platform for resolving geopolitical and security issues. Also, while welcoming the establishment of an India Middle East Europe Economic Corridor Plan announcing announced during the G20, China has sent an implicit warning that it should not become a geopolitical tool. It is evident that China's perception is that the G20 was being used by the West solely to try and impose its world view. A view a few other world leaders also do not seem to have given the G20 Delhi G20 a thumbs up with some observing that hardly any of the geostrategic and geoeconomic issues had been sorted out. The South Korean president, for instance, warned that the world is in the in a period of poly crisis and encompassing geopolitical competition, spiraling, spiraling inflation and continuation of the protracted war with Ukraine. India, for its own stake, has 
to be very given the fluid based situation across the globe china remains a hegemony in asia not with sending china's economy becoming embroiled in an extent statement tell me file many in the west view china's situation of debt deflation and demographic decline as an opportunity they remain oblivious oblivious to the reality of the china china's known capacity to resort to various means of, means to overcome its problem india however cannot afford to do so india remain an obvious target of uh, target for china and is is in its cross area cross air file the west can possibly live with a situation in which several of its strategies to contain china have failed india cannot do aspects of the west's acknowledgement of india's growing economy strength and india's membership of quad which is now openly accepted as a key grouping in the anti china annals Call for abundant caution on India's part, since China is unlikely to the take kindly to either the return of two blocks in eluptably. The character of G20 has been G20 during has been changing the, in recent years. So contrast the role of G20 during the 2008-9 economic crisis when leading economies tried to find ways and means to prevent the world from plunging. into a prolonged economic crisis with its role in recent years where the main focus of the G20 has been on the global political conflict and less on the nature of the global economic landscape many analysts view the view to the view of that under the rubric of G20 a subterranean conflict is being waged today by the two opposing blocks to alter the balance of power the two camps one led by the west and the other by china russia had already earned the sub subrequent for enduring rivals and gained in a battle for global supremacy the, the rules based the world order mean meanwhile has become a cast all phase or of merely one segment the reality is that the world faces emerging world disorder the return of two antagonistic blocks and a shrinking space for the non aligned the stalemate in the ukraine conflict and the eclipse in russia's hope of a quick war over in ukraine seems to have encouraged the us to strengthen and expand expand the north atlantic treaty organization nato under its leadership a new nato is set to become even more dependent on us for military supplies and capabilities to be able to act as a bulk part against russia Russian expansionism it has it in turn raised the prospect of a US equipped territorial forces emerging in Ukraine outside Europe a number of non NATO allies are being inveigled to a join US led alliance to counter authoritarianism represented by the Russia and China which proceeding a, a proceeding a place Japan and South Korea have already capitulated to the west wing australia has become a key partner in the us led alliance in the southern hemisphere russia and china in turn are depending their strategic align, alignment countries such as north korea are cementing their relation with this bloc the recent meeting in moscow between russian president vladimir putin and north korean leader kim jong un has further deepened their relationship china is exploiting its frontage in the pacific ocean is to openly challenge the us naval power here russia and turkey has dependent their relationship based on the shared interest and to and the personal friendship between mr putin and mr and turkish leader recep tayyip erdogan russia is once again seeking to expand its footprint in africa and russia's recent agreement to supply food grains to africa African states at at subsidized prices or even for free is aimed towards the this and heading non alignment the many new alignments are set to deal a death blow, blow to the concept of for non alignment it is providing increasingly difficult for countries to remain non aligned in the trust sense of the world even existing formations such as BRICS Brazil Russia India China South Africa are trending to find the situation untenable 
given the multiplicity of the relationship and the lattice work of the security agreement that has emerged with the space for non alignment uh, has a dramatically strong divergent vision of the international order the world confront a dismal future it may not be too far uh, far wrong to summarize that north not with standing all the glitch surrounding the 18th g20 in new delhi and uh, the obligatory reference to the importance of the global south among its priorities countries such as india despite all the hard work they put in new check board of international politics with hardly any decisive voice in determining the course of what world event then they do war in caucasus caucasus war in caucasus Azerbaijan should respect the autonomy of the Armenian population. Azerbaijan's brisk military recapture of an of Nagorno Karabakh and American populated enclave, Armenian populated enclave with its border shows the changing power dynamics in Caucasus, where Amer Armenian, Russia, and Russian and Turkish interests collide. The roots of the conflict go back to the final days of the Soviet Union, when the enclave's majority of Armenian Christian population led a referendum to break away from the Shia majority. Azerbaijan Nagorno Karabakh Karabakh was then run by an Armenian separatist by backed by the Republic of Armenia until recently in 2020. Azerbaijan backed by Turkey fought with Armenia and Russian. Treaty ally and captured much of Nagorno Karabakh. The Russian then did little to help Armenia, but brokered a ceasefire that left Stepanakert Nagorno Karabakh, the biggest city, in the hands of the local. The peace did not hold. Azerbaijan blockaded the Lachin Corridor, the main road connecting Nagorno Karabakh. To Armenia, leaving the 1 lakh 20 thousand population of the enclave to face mounting economic miseries, facing international criticism for the blockade, Azerbaijan promised to flip it but established a checkpoint, counting, continuing to control the flow of goods and medicines. Last week, it attacked Stepan Stepana Kert, forcing the separatists to hand over full control to Baku. In effect, Azerbaijan achieved in a day which. But it have had failed to do in the three decades. Two major geopolitical shifts seem to have helped Baku first. Turkey came to play a bigger role in the Caucasus region, the former periphery of the Ottoman Turks, the threw its weight behind Azerbaijan with political and military support. Second, Russia's Ukraine invasion, which tied Moscow. to its western front has led to a substantial erosion of russian power to in the caucasus armenia had often expressed displeasure with russia's lack of action moscow did not and did not did nothing besides issuing a statement which when azerbaijan gradually dismantled the ceasefire agreement baku realized that the geopolitical situation favored it in uh, favored it and then moved in to take the take over the enclave it is widely Recognize that the Nagorno Karabakh is a part of Azerbaijan, but there is a history of mistrust and violence in Armenia in region. In the region, having gone through a genocide and several conflicts, have a sharp historical memory and remain wary of any change in the status quo. Azerbaijan's takeover has triggered a massive refugee outflow to Armenia. There are already allegations that Baku is committing. Genocidal crimes for Azerbaijan. This can be an opportunity to integrate Nagorno Karabakh, Karabakh without further bloodshed. But for that, Baku should ensure equal rights for the Armenian population, Armenian population, and respect its autonomy. If not, Azerbaijan would face prolonged local resistance, which could not only deny it a, it a clean victory, but also turn its quest to control the. And clear ugly. Then a cover water, cover water, conundrum.
on september 21 the supreme court has ruled karnataka to continue releasing 5000 cubic feet per second cubic of water from the kaveri river to tamil nadu on for 15 days in line with the decision of the kaveri water regulation committee cwrc and kaveri water management authority cwma this has evoked a strong rejection reaction from certain section of karnataka and upper riparian state how how has the public reacted on september 22 22 the police arrested activist of the federation of the karnataka farmers association in the mysore as they tried to barrage into the mysore jilla panchayat premises to gherao urban development minister bharathi suresh the next day several shops and business establishment remained closed in mandya a coalition of farmers and kannada organizations have called for a bond in bengaluru on september 26 where the cwrc is scheduled to meet and review the situation of water availability of and release how is the kaveri water being shared the kaveri water dispute tribunal is a tribunal final tribunal is a final award of 2007 and the supreme court judgment of february 2018 spell out the system for sharing the river water and the institutional mechanism for ensuring implementation of the judicial protection pointing out that 740 000 million cubic feet tmc feet of water would be available in kaveri basin in a normal year the court which broadly adhered to the to the cw dtc award made the allocation for the constituents constituents of the basin for its followers karnataka 284.75 tmc feet Tamil Nadu 404.25 TMC feet, Kerala 30 TMC feet, and Puducherry 7 TMC feet, 10 TMC feet, and 4 TMC feet have been set apart for environmental protection and inevitable escapes into the sea. Of Tamil Nadu overall allocated quantity, Karnataka is is to ensure 1 177.25 TMC feet as per a month schedule at the Billy Gundulu. Located on the interstate border of the of the quantity 123.14 TMC feet is to be given during the period from the June to September, also marking the season of the southwest monsoon. Invariably, it is during this period that the Kaveri issue gets played as well. The monsoon sometimes yields lower rainfall than the anticipated CW. The CWMA and its assisting body CWRC. RC, are in existence since June 2018 to oversee the implementation of the verdict of the tribunal and the court. Why are the Karnataka's farmer upset that this year's southeast monsoon has played ruined, especially in south interior Karnataka, the region where the Kaveri River originates between June 1 and September 23. The region suffered a deficit rainfall of 27 percent, according to the India Meteorological Department, Kudagu of Karnataka and Vyanad of Kerala, which from uh, from which form part of the catchment of the Kaveri and its tributary Kaveri registered a deficit rainfall of 43 percent. And 56 percent respectively. Karnataka in its application before court had started that at the reservoir level, which covers a part of the catchment, the shortfall is 53.42 percent. Given the fact that the state has a poor reservoir in the Kaveri Basin, last week Karnataka told the Supreme Court that the daily flow of 5,000 cubic of water to Tamil Nadu was against its interest. The state, especially in urban areas like Bengaluru, was on. The blink of a drinking water crisis, whereas the Tamil Nadu was in need of water for water for irrigation. It also added that the distress in the Karnataka had increased in the past 15 days. How serious is the situation of in Tamil Nadu, being the lower riparian state in the Kaveri Basin? Tamil Nadu is mainly dependent on release by release by Karnataka, particularly during the southwest monsoon, as it falls under the then shadow region in the season. As per the data of the Central Water Commission, available up to September 21, the state received 40.76 TMC feet, whereas it should have got 12.11 TMC feet in a normal year. Even after giving allowance for the failure of the monsoon and the quantum of the shortfall as quoted by Karnataka Tamil Nadu, contended that it should have got a We got at least 7.8 TMC feet more as on September 12. It is in it is in need of water for at least 3 lakh area acres of over which short term crop acres over which short term crop 
has already has been raised already there are reports of the crop being at a at a risk of withering in many places however the state which will require in the coming weeks much more water for its long term crop of 120 to 135 days samba which is in normally red over 15 lakh acres of providing livelihood opportunity to up to lakhs of landless laborers a substantial portion of farming activity under the samba crop takes place during the northeast monsoon october december which is much more unpredictable than the uh, southwest in addition to serving the irrigation the cavalry is the main source of drinking water for several districts in the state what is the way forward it is the time that the cwma along with the constituents uh, constituents uh, final idea distressed uh, sharing formula the there have been differences over the choice of uh, param- parameters that determine such a formula making use of a present crisis in the authority should take the initiative in convincing all the stakeholders uh, in involving the proposed formula then you what are the findings of the parliament on parliament panel on nep the parliament sunday committee on education headed by the bharatiya janata party bjp mp vivek thakur tabled a report tabled a report during the special session of the parliament of on the implementation of national education policy 2020 in higher education what did the report say the report looked at the silent picture of the nepc implementation in the higher education sector and the progress made so far the panel met representatives of various state governments union minister ministries higher education institution and other stakeholders to prepare the report the report noted that the 1043 universities functioning in the in the country 70% are under the state act and that 94% of students are in a state or private institute with, the, with just 6% of the students uh, of the student in central higher education institution stressing the importance of the states in providing higher education what were the issues discussed with the 31 member panel tried to discuss issues such as the rigid separation of a discipline limited access to higher education in socio economically disadvantaged areas lack of higher education institution that that teach in local language the limited number of faculty lack of institutional autonomy lesser emphasis on research ineffective regulatory system and no low standard of on graduated education the panel said that by 2030 every district in the country should have at least one multidisciplinary hei and that the gross enrollment ratio in the higher education including vocation education should be increased from 26.3% in 2018 to 50% by 2035 where were the recommendation the panel asked the union government and the state government to take action such as year marking suitable funds for the education of socially and economically disadvantaged groups setting clear targets for the higher gross enrollment ratio for scdg enhancing gender balance in admission admissions to hcis providing more financial assistance and scholarship to scdgs in both public and private hcis making admission process and curriculum more inclusive increasing employability potential of higher education programs and for developing more degree courses taught in the regional language and bilingually the panel also recommended specific infrastructure steps to help physically challenged students and a strict enforcement of all known discrimination and anti harassment rules the committee appreciated the manner in which the nep was implemented in jammu and kashmir it said that the union territory was among the first in the country to implement nep why the northeast cannot be treated as a single homogeneous single homogeneous territory the north east region comprising of the states arunachal pradesh assam manipur meghalaya mizoram nagaland sikkim and tripura is home to numerous ethnic communities who have migrated from all points of the compass with the majority of them belonging to the indo chinese mongoloid racial grouping in her introduction to identity and marginality in the north east india winelling hing Sitil Hulu writes that the ten- tendency of conceptualizing the region as a single homogeneous territory is problematic, not a single entity, entity such a 
कंस्ट्रक्शन डिटरमाइंस हाउ द रीजन वाज गवर्न बाय ब्रिटिश कॉलोनियर्स कॉलोनाइजर्स अर्लियर एंड द इंडियन स्टेट नाउ बाय कंस्ट्रक्टिंग द आइडिया ऑफ ए शेयर्ड आइडेंटिटी अमंग पीपल फ्रॉम वेरियस पार्ट्स ऑफ द रीजन द नॉर्थ ईस्ट कंसीडर ए मार्जिनल जियोग्राफिकल स्पेस एस एज शीतल हाउ इज ए डाइवर्स एज इंडिया इटसेल्फ इन टर्म ऑफ लिंग्विस्टिक कल्चरल एथनिक रिप्रेजेंटेशन द The recurrent theme of the volume C has a degraded as result of seminar identity and marginality in Northeast India challenges for socio social sciences research in 2017 organized by the Department of Socio Sociology University of Hyderabad is that the region cannot be portrayed merely as a homogeneous category. There is a need to highlight the elements of the heterogeneity of different. groups of their experiences social realities the c says to take into account social realities social realities of the region it is necessary to discuss issues like indigeneity policy economy migration and migration land rights insurgency militarization state violence and law like apsa armed forces special power act resolution and so on if people from the north east as migrant citizen experience marginality and some sometimes violence in cities like delhi hyderabad mumbai and bangalore there is a discrimination discrimination against outsider living the living in north east india as well she writes with the aim to understand the underlying dynamics of the region the book is divided into six main sections politics of difference and the articulation of identities colonialism northeast india race ethnicity and migration negotiating gender culture and identity indigeneity land and identity and borders state markets city how and salah punatil chapter northeastern migrants in delhi racial discrimination violence and state state response explores the prejudice of the, and the hostility that northeastern have experienced in the national capital in the recent recent past the the base baga baruaha committee which was set up in 2014 to look into the various concerns of the citizen hailing from the northeastern state living in various parts of the country had recommended reaching out to the people from the north east via social media and a special helpline 1093 was synchronized with the helpline number 100 as good further there were useful or if this has this had a solved problem faced by north east migrants 68.4% of respondent gave credit to the efforts made by the government and only a few 12.6% were specific skeptical about these provisions a member of major bezba rahu rahua committee alan gume golmei however said the result as far from satisfactory we are asking for the special helpline number to be made a national helpline instead of it being operational in delhi alone a 25 year old research student from jawaharlal nehru university said education is the answer to the problems faced by the people from north east india knowing the history of the north east india and the and to be more precise the fact that north east is in india will will really help in uniting people from different regions as a as citizen of one nation women in conflict region if we take a closer to look at the region itself several states including manipur nagaland and assam have seen waves of violence over ethnic ethnic issues land identity and so forth in the 1990s conflict between two ethnic communities the hokies and naga nagas led to massive displacement and ruth nangaling thing in the in her paper women in conflict conflict situation experiences of marginalization of displaced koki women in manipur looks at the consequence of such disorder such disturbances of on health food livelihood and economic security and the long road to rehabilitation in her study the found, she found that there were cases where a woman headed the household household after being displaced and shouldered the entire responsibility of supporting the family women often became the primary breadwinners in the in their family due to forced displacement and or death of their husbands or the other male 
members of the family nengle nengle healing him study focuses on the focus on the on one of the three major ethnic groups in manipur the other two being the metis and the nagas during the conflict displacement happened among the nagas too with agriculture being the basic means of livelihood the land is a highly valued entity the conflict led to the alienation of the land land from both the parties and especially from the displaced population there was a notably notable shift in the nature of occupation before before and after the conflict she notes the notes in sample groups from sabang pahi uh, which was inhabited by a fully displaced population in the majority world as manual contractual laborers so while a few were skilled in handicrafts the women faced persisting health issues like malnutrition the women faced persisting health issues like malnutrition post traumatic stress of or other injuries the risk of contracting a communicable disease has also increased due to widespread poverty congested living in living condition lack of awareness and the absence of adequate health care services these are issues which women are facing in the present conflict in manipur as well in the forward forward purendra prasad discussed the process of marginalization with within the marginalized groups for instance tribal bodies of nagaland which elected in in its first two women mamle in this year are opposing 33% reservation for reservation for women which are, which they claim will infringe on nagaga customary laws protected by constitution similarly even the popular narratives glorify the status of women in manipur the matriarchal structure in khasi society in equality equality the system is only matrilineal matrilineal with the power resting with the maternal members maternal male members and those inherently patriarchal like any other society the next day jay shankar gutteras discussed the reform of a global financial institution sustainability national affairs minister s jay shankar and united nations secretary general antonio gutteras had bilateral talks on monday and discussed the sustainability agenda of agenda and the reform of international financial institutions as per mr jay shankar the minister met with gutteras at the united nations headquarters on the eve of the minister's address the address to 78 sessions sessions of the united nations general assembly unga discussed how India's G20 presidency has contributed to strengthening United Nations Sustainable Development Agenda. Mr. Jaisankar wrote on X, who has coordinated closely in this regard over the last years, appreciated UNSG's strong commitment to reforming international financial institutions. He added, referring to the reform of the World Bank and International Monetary Fund on the reform agenda, is a greater lending capacity for the World Bank and the and more broad board wide. Representation for the continuing countries on the boards of the of these institution, Mr. Gutierrez has been a vocal critic of the performance of the institution. Minister of the minister also met the UNGA president Dennis Francis, with whom he said he had discussed India's G20 presidency as well as the reform of multilateralism and giving the global South its due on crucial issues of the of our times. The government has sought to position India. is the advocate of the global south and had had organized a number of sessions similarly themed events on the fringes of the unj sessions in new york congratulated india's successful g20 chairmanship especially on india's own wearing advocacy in support of the global south and south mr francis said mr joy shankar also held a talks with the madagascar foreign minister yavati sila discussed the development partnership millets and rice production digital delivery and defense cooperation he said on ex mr joshankar will address the general assembly on tuesday morning on behalf of the government the next philippines removes 
Philippines removes China's barrier in disputed swell. The Philippines Philippine Coast Guard said on Monday it has a com- compiled with a British presidential order to remove a floating, floating barrier placed by China's Coast Guard to prevent a Filipino fishing boat from entering a lagoon in a disputed shoal in the South China Sea. Philippine officials condemned the in- installation of a 300 meter long barrier at the entrance to the lagoon at Scarborough of Seoul as a violation of international law and their South- Southeast Asian nations submitted to the Philippine Coast Guard and Coast Guard's report that it has removed the barrier underscore on intensifying Philippine efforts to fight China's increasingly aggressive actions against the many hours in one of the world's most hotly contested water China Coast Guard vessels led the roof and mid barrier held up by viewers last week as a Philippine government fisheries vessel approved and more than 50, 50 Philippine fishing boats farmed outside the Seoul. The Philippine Coast Guard said the Philippine Coast Guard said on Monday night that the ETS successfully removed the floating barrier in a special operation in compliance with the order of a presidential president um, Ferdinand Marcos Jr. It did not provide other details like if the entire barrier was moved and when and how Chinese Coast Guard ships which have closely guarded <coughs> the Seoul for years rejected the decision the decisive action of the Philippine Coast Guard to remove the barrier aligned with the international law and the Philippines and the Philippines Subunity over the Seoul Coast Seoul, the Coast Guard said the PCG remains committed to the upholding international law safeguarding the welfare of the Filipino fisher folk and protecting the rights of the Philippines in, in its territorial water fishing rights breached earlier on Monday Philippine National Security Advisor Edu Rudu Anu said that the placement by the People's Republic, uh, Republic of China of a barrier violates the traditional fishing rights of the of our fishermen. Mr. Anu said that the Philippines will take all the appropriate actions to cause the removal of the barrier and, uh, and to protect the rights of our fishermen in the area. In Beijing, Chinese Foreign Minister Spokesman Wang Wenbing said the swast. Well, and its adjacent to water are China's inherent territory where Beijing has indisputable sovereignty. A Philippine government fisheries vessel trespassed uh, into the waters without China's permission on September 22. Mr. Wang said and attempted to introduce it into the lagoon of the Sual. China's Coast Guard took the necessary measures to stop and warn of the ship. The in accordance with the law, he added, it's the largest pair of in long simmering territorial dispute in the busy and resource rich waterways, most of which is claimed by China. The Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia, Brunei, and Taiwan are involved with China in the conflict, which have been which have long been regarded as a potential Asian plus point and a delicate fault line in the US China rivalry in the region. Following India US raises concern over the Chinese vessel visit with the Sri Lankan government. Following India, the US has raised concern over the Ranil Vikrama Singhe administration over the scheduled visit of a Chinese research vessel to Sri Lanka in October. Colombo Bad Media has reported. In a recent meeting with Sri Lankan Foreign Minister Ali Sabri, under Secretary of State for Political Affairs, Victoria Nuland, took up the coming visit of the Chinese research vessel Sri on Sri and Six to Sri Lanka. The Delhi Mirror newspaper reported on Monday. Reportedly, Mr. Sabri reassured the American officials that Colombo would be would adhere to a standard opening operating procedure that the Government has recently finalized the offer all foreign vessel, <coughs> vessels intending to call at a Sri Lankan, the Sri Lankan port. New Delhi had recently raised the matter with a top Sri Lankan official. Colombo Bed sources told the Hindu 
file Sri Lanka's Ministry of Defense has made, has made its recommendation on the vessel's visit to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and official commitment, comment from the Foreign Ministry is awaited according to the local media. Defense authorities have cleared the visit earlier this month. China said on news channel CGTN reported that the Chinese geophysical scientific research vessel Xi'an 6 or Experiment 6 was heading out of on an expeditionary voyage in, in the eastern areas of the Indian Ocean, the departing from, from Guangzhou south in China, Guangdong province organized by South China Sea Institute of Oceanology SCSCIO under the Chinese Academy of Science. The vessel is scheduled to operate at sea at, for, at, at sea for 80 days with the 20 scientific research projects from 13 research teams on board covering a range of more than 12,000 nautical miles, roughly 22,200 kilometers. It is set. Strongly, with strong reservations, Sri Lanka's National Aquatic Research, research and Development, Development Agency NARA said to be a part, partner in the vessel research activity in Sri Lankan water earlier stated that the data collected during the process would be in its process process on possession. The research vessel scheduled visit will come also after the another Chinese warship docked at the Columbia Colombo port for a few days the visits assumed the significance after China's Chinese military ship Yuan one five arrived at Sri Lankan Hambantota port in August last year despite India and the US expressing strong reservation at that time. The China maintained that it was completely unjustified justified for certain countries to cite them cite the so called security concerns to preserve Sri Lanka Colombo's decision to allow the visit last year after the deferring it by five days strained diplomatic ties with New Delhi at a time when India extended an unprecedented economic relief to the island nation that was experiencing its worst financial meltdown. Subsequently, President Vikrama Singe and a top official from the Sri Lankan side repeatedly sought to reassure India that the Sri Lanka will ensure that its Territory is not used for any activity that could threaten India's security interest. Meanwhile, the High Commission of India in Colombo recently organized a current curtain raiser to the Global Maritime India Summit to be held in India from the October 17 to 19 in Mumbai, Sri Lanka's Ministry, Minister of Port Shipping and Aviation Nirmala Tiripala. Silva, who was the chief guest at the event, emphasis, emphasis the importance of close collaboration, exchange of knowledge, and adaptation of new technology for growth of the maritime sector. According to a statement from the Indian Mission, then last the article banks to banks to attract more global investment, says SNP. Higher credit growth, improved margins and stable asset quality boosting lenders prospects, says the market intelligence provider private sector banking drawing a bulk of foreign investor capital. Indian banks are set to draw increasing global investment from investors looking for the better return as higher credit growth, improved margins and stable assets quality boost lenders the prospect s and p global market intelligence said in a report as per s and p global the total market value of foreign institutional investors holding the indian banks and had risen in recent years of recent years to 8.36 trillion as of june 30 from 7.71 trillion a year earlier this is a significant rise from the 6.73 trillion figure in june 2020 the market intelligence provider said the majority of fii Holdings 93.5% of the value which June of June 30 was contracted, concentrated in the biggest private sector banks and SP global data show the top investors for FIIEs include ICICI Bank, HDFC Bank, and Kotak Mahindra. The market value of finals FIIEs holding in private sector banks rose to 7.82 trillion rupees. Age of June, June from 7.29 trillion rupees a year earlier, the market value of FII is holding in India state owned bank clogged in at 541 billion 
rupees as of June. U.S. Bank Capital Research and Management topped the list of foreign investor in Indian banks, followed by BlackRock. Then next we have Blanche told the told to display information on borrowers linked to surface act. The Reserve Bank of India has asked the regulated entities, namely commercial banks and non-banking finance companies, to display information regarding borrowers whose insecure assets has been taken into possession by by the RIS under the securitization and record reconstruction of financial assets and enforcement of security interest surface act 2002. The information would have to be displayed in a Described format, fostering transparency. This is a part of a part of a move towards greater transparency. The RBI said RIS shall upload upload this information on their website in the form in the format as described. The first such list shall be displayed on the website of RIS within six months from the data of this circular, and the list shall be updated on a monthly basis. The RBI said in a circular. So. This is all for today, friends. We will meet from tomorrow onwards with the new, new news articles and with analysis. So, thank you, thank you all.